Have you ever noticed yourself acting differently depending on who's around and what's happening? For example, it's common for people to talk differently or code switch when they're having conversations with people of different age. This ability to differentiate behaviors in order to be appropriate for different situations is an adaptive potential that everyone has to facilitate social interactions. However, the extreme case of such different selves displayed in front of different audiences is a psychological disorder called dissociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder. Those with DID display distinct images of self to different audiences but lost the ability to assimilate various aspects of one's identity, memory, and consciousness into a single multidimensional self. It's important for us to pay more attention to and know more of dissociative identity disorder because it's a relatively common disorder, especially among clinical populations. Around the globe, DID is most prevalent in clinical populations from North America and other Western countries, while less frequently seen in clinical populations from Asia. This variance in prevalence around the globe suggests some cultural factors are influencing the diagnosis of DID. It's more likely that DID would be diagnosed as possession disorder in Asia due to the Asian cultural and religious beliefs that are different from Western beliefs. In addition, there is a lack of awareness in psychiatric practices of DID in Korea due to the commonality of DID patients being identified as possessed. However, due to the increasing westernization and individualism movements that are influencing Asia, there is a rising awareness of dissociative phenomena and increasing recognition of childhood abuse and neglect, leading to more cases of DID being diagnosed in Asia in the recent years. With about 90% of DID patients reporting a history of trauma, DID is a psychiatric disorder that most frequently relates to childhood trauma. Of the reported trauma history, about 74% are sexual abuse, 57% are emotional abuse, 73% are physical abuse, and 63% are neglect, with the different types of abuse and neglect reported together by individual patients. Such high correlation between DID and childhood trauma supports the trauma model of DID, where the disorder is etiologically related to chronic neglect and abuse in childhood, showing that trauma is a big part of what causes the onset of DID. In addition, such trauma is usually experienced in childhood at the hands of an attachment figure, or a caregiver which in most cases refer to a parent. So the parent-child relationship also plays a role in the experience of the child. Specifically, the relationship and the early childhood care quality are correlated with the likelihood of dissociation of the child. Dissociation is a key feature in patients with DID and what categorizes DID as a dissociative disorder. Dissociation is part of an adaptive defense mechanism that allows the person to decrease in bodily function and escape from the reality for protection. However, when such mechanism is triggered multiple times due to constant traumatic experiences in childhood, the person is more likely to dissociate due to conditioned learning that makes the initiation of the mechanism easier. Even when the patient is no longer experiencing the trauma in real time, intrusion is a method in which the patient practices the dissociation mechanism. During intrusion, parts of the traumatic events are displayed repetitively, eliciting the dissociation responses just like the actual traumatic events. Such intrusion, involving hallucination of some kind, is common in DID patients, although previously not given proper attention to in the DSM-4. Due to every patient's different dissociation learning experience and trauma experience, the trigger events for the switch to a different personality or an alter is different for every patient. But generally speaking, memory of the abuse and related subjects could be a potential trigger event. For a diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder, the patient need to meet the following five criteria according to the DSM-5. First of all, the patient need to have two or more distinct personality states. Secondly, the patient has to have recurring gaps in memory. Thirdly, the symptoms cause a great deal of distress or impairment. In addition, the disturbance is not due to any acceptable or appropriate practices. And finally, there is no other reason for the observed symptoms. 
The different personalities within the patient are usually described as one host and multiple alters, each having their own identity and only responsible for what they identify with. Perceiving the switch from one personality to another, there are likely physical symptoms that signal the switch. Some examples are severe agitation, sweating, tremor, and a withdrawn posture. DID is highly comorbid and tend to be found in patients along with other psychological disorders. Some psychological disorders that DID is commonly found with are PTSD, borderline personality disorder, and depression. Two main ways to assess for DID diagnosis would be structured interview with the psychiatrist and the dissociative experiences scale. In addition, there are some scales that are used to test DID-related symptoms. Due to high comorbidity of DID, brain imaging studies and laboratory tests are also used to rule out any other possible conditions that might cause the symptoms. The course of DID is usually chronic, meaning that it lasts for a lifetime and the symptoms are consistent if untreated. However, despite the correlation between childhood abuse and neglect with DID, the severity of the trauma is not related with the prognosis or the treatment outcome for the patient. On the other hand, some important determinants for the course and outcome of the disorder are ongoing abuse, continuous or new traumatic experiences, and the comorbid condition. Some common treatment methods for dissociative identity disorder involves hypnosis, cognitive analytic therapy, and Clough's individualized and multi-stage treatment. While hypnosis is generally a supplemental technique, the other two methods have some evidence that they are helpful in relieving the symptoms of DID when used alone in multiple cases. CAT involves identifying and revising what went wrong when the patient was little to cause the problems that the patient has, while Clough's treatment involves learning coping skills to reduce the frequency of dissociation and making contacts and agreement among the alters for a goal of integration. An important predictor for the treatment outcome is how close the patient is to integration at the end of the treatment. The best treatment result is obtained when the patient is able to reach integration successfully to become a single multidimensional self through fusion of the alters. In addition to targeting integration, the best treatment methods target the symptoms of comorbid disorders. In most cases, targeting depressive symptoms will be helpful because DID often comorbid with depression. Finally, it's important for the therapist and the client to establish a trustful relationship where the client and the therapist share the same goal. The therapist should acknowledge and understand the patient's possible desire to keep the elders for reasons of protection so the patients will be more cooperative during treatment to lead to a better result. In the future, research involving multiple subjects should be done on the effectiveness of CAT for dissociative identity disorder due to the fact that there has only been a case study showing the effectiveness of the treatment. In addition, future treatment should consider including more elements that serve to encourage and prepare the patient for the integration of the alters to result in a better treatment outcome.